A notorious L.A. gang leader described by police as a thrill killer is headed for death row at San Quentin. You are sentenced to death. 35-year-old Timothy McGee seen smiling and laughing during the sentencing hearing was convicted in October of 2007 of killing two gang rivals and a woman. One of the victims was shot 28 times. McGee also opened fire on police officers during an ambush, but they weren't hurt. Prosecutors say he even boasted in rap lyrics about the pleasure he got from killing. Even in a city with more than 150 gang slangs a year, Timothy Joseph McGee's murder stood out. For years, authorities say, McGee waged a campaign of terror in the northeastern part of Los Angeles. A shot caller for a long entrenched gang, he hunted rivals but sometimes killed indiscriminately, boasting in rap lyrics about the pleasure he felt in taking life. But before we get into the video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn your post notifications on. Timothy Joseph McGee is a convicted serial killer and Toonerville Rifa 13 gang member of Scottish and Mexican descent from the Atwater Village neighborhood of Los Angeles, California. He is alleged to have been responsible for at least 12 homicides between 1997 and 2001, three of which led to convictions. McGee is also suspected of at least 10 attempted murders, four of which led to convictions. In 2018, the Los Angeles Times named McGee one of the top 20 most notorious killers in the history of California. A list that included the likes of Charles Manson, the Golden State Killer, and the Night Stalker. McGee was raised in the neighborhood of Atwater Village, a primarily Hispanic area of Los Angeles, just north of downtown Los Angeles near Glendale, California. The place is ran by a Mexican street gang known as Tunerville, also referred to as Tunerville Rifa 13, aka TVR. Their main rivals were a street gang called the Rascals 13. At some point in the 1990s, McGee became the gang's leader, or shot caller, demanding absolute loyalty from nearly 200 members, training his legion in calisthenics, target practice, tactics to evade police, and procedures to eliminate rival gang members. The earliest recorded act of violence committed by McGee was a 1989 assault with a firearm when, at the age of 16, he pointed a shotgun at a guard while detained at a juvenile custody facility. In 1994, a 21-year-old McGee was convicted of assaulting a law enforcement officer in San Bernardino County and was sentenced to four years in prison. But 1997 was when McGee's reign of terror would officially begin. He was released from prison that year after serving three years and instantly started causing disarray. On October 14, 1997, while on parole, it is alleged that a 24-year-old McGee committed his first homicide. Ronnie Martin, age 23, was a member of Frogtown, one of TVR's biggest rivals in Atwater Village. Martin was shot 28 times and pronounced dead at the scene. McGee was not linked to this homicide until years later, after an unrelated charge violated his parole. McGee was sent back to prison in late 1997. After violating parole in 1997, McGee was imprisoned for roughly a year and a half. In March 1999, he was again released and lived with his grandmother in the San Gabriel Valley. But 11 months later, in February 2000, McGee was again found in violation of the terms of his parole and returned to prison. He finally earned his release in April 2000 after serving roughly five years on the assault that originally carried a four-year sentence. Police note that crime in Atwater Village seemed to increase sharply each time McGee was released from prison. On 
October 17, 1999, while on parole, a bodyguard and two rap artists were shot near the gates of Echo Sounds Music Studio in Atwater Village after concluding a recording session. The crew had gathered on the studio's patio at 11.40 p.m. when at least two gunmen confronted them and began shooting without warning. The bodyguard, Dwayne Dupree, age 23, was killed, pronounced dead at the scene by paramedics. Dupree was guarding rapper Ricardo Corrupt Brown, future executive vice president of Death Row Records, who was finishing his album, The Streets. Corrupt's producer, Delmar Dillinger, also with Death Row Records and cousin of legendary rapper Snoop Dogg, was present but uninjured. Death Row artist Javon the Realist Jones was wounded in the foot, and Willard Act of Fool Givers was wounded in the calf. It was McGee and, a, and an affiliate who were linked to the shooting. On January 3rd, 2000, rival gang member Ryan Gonzalez, age 16, was killed as he walked home from a party. He was fatally shot in Toonerville Gang territory near Atwater Avenue Elementary School. A 27-year-old McGee was the alleged assailant. Gonzalez was a member of the Rascals Gang and he happened to share McGee's nickname, Huero. Investigators believe McGee's motive was simply that the neighborhood wasn't big enough for two people with the same street name. In June 2000, an arrest warrant was issued for McGee in connection with the Gonzalez murder, but it was several years until law enforcement caught up with him. On September 14, 2000, John Marshall High School student Marty Gregory Royball, age 17, was fatally shot as he sketched a picture of the Los Angeles River. A homeless man, David Lamont Martin, age 33, was also shot and killed at the scene, likely a witness to the shooting. A 27-year-old McGee was suspected in both murders. McGee had been incarcerated for yet another parole violation involving narcotics, this time at the California Institution for Men in Chino, California, but he was released in May 2001. Beginning in June, he was suspected of shooting nine individuals in the span of five months, leaving six dead and three wounded. The homicidal spree began on June 11, 2001, when McGee was traveling through Los Feliz. Manuel Apodaca Jr., age 21, lived 35 miles to the east in Pomona and was passing through with his pregnant girlfriend, Nina Guerrero. McGee allegedly opened fire on their vehicle on Los Feliz Boulevard near Interstate 5. Apodaca, allegedly a member of the Rascals gang, was killed, and Guerrero suffered severe damage, but their unborn baby was delivered successfully. In July 2001, Carlos Velasso, age 21, was working at a furniture warehouse on North San Fernandino Road in Atwater Village. Police say that McGee, who had driven by and seen the stranger, ordered gang affiliates to kill the man because he did not recognize him. The homicidal order was carried out successfully. Atwater Village resident Sherry Witsowski had reported to police that McGee was dealing drugs out of his sister's house nearby, allegedly. On August 8, 2001, Wisoski was murdered, as well as witnesses to the crime, Mary Ann Wisoski, Sherry's mother, and Bram Robinson. McGee is the alleged trigger man in the triple homicide. On November 8, 2001, McGee was allegedly prowling the streets with fellow gang member Eduardo Rodriguez, seeking revenge over the death of a comrade hours earlier. 
Armed with handguns and assault rifles, they came upon rival gang member Duan Natividad in the 3100 block of Hollydale Drive, a mere six blocks south of the Gonzalez murder in 2000. Natividad was driving his car with his girlfriend, Majorie Mendoza, and her friend, Erica Ree. Mendoza and Natividad had three children, who were not with them at the time. At 12.01, November 9th, as Natividad pulled up to a residence, McGee and Rodriguez allegedly pulled in front of them, exited their vehicle, and opened fire on their car without warning or any verbal altercation. Natividad ducked and was struck in the right hand, while Reed ducked in the back seat avoiding injury. As her boyfriend threw the car in reverse and accelerated away, Mendoza was hit multiple times and was driven to Glendale Memorial Hospital, where she later died. Tunerville gang member Eduardo Rodriguez was arrested the following day. Homicide detectives announced on November 27, 2001 that another suspect, Timothy McGee, was still at large and a warrant had been issued for his arrest. Detective Timothy Neal noted that since McGee's release from prison six months before, violent crimes in the Atwater area had skyrocketed. Christina Duran, a friend of McGee's, learned of Majory Mendoza's murder after McGee solicited her help that same day. He needed to retrieve his girlfriend's cell phone he had dropped at the scene of the Mendoza murder. Duran was unsuccessful in finding the cell phone, but police managed to locate it and used it as evidence in McGee's eventual trial. Shortly after the murder, Duran admitted to police during a videotaped interview with LAPD homicide detectives that McGee was involved in the death of Mendoza. She was visibly shaken during the interrogation frequently stating her fear of retribution. Two days after speaking with police, Christina Duran was killed in an execution-style murder on the night she celebrated her 29th birthday party, allegedly shot by McGee five times in the right side of the head. When it became clear that McGee was running the Tunerville gang, the U.S. Marshal Service aided the LAPD in forming a task force with more investigators, vehicles, and even aircraft. McGee was placed on the U.S. Marshal's 15 Most Wanted Fugitives list on September 25, 2002, wanted for questioning in an additional 11 homicides. The popular television series, America's Most Wanted, appealed to the public by filming a segment in early 2003 dedicated to the search for McGee. Despite such a record of violence, McGee had received surprisingly little attention from the national media before this point, with barely any coverage in Southern California. Suspicious of the grand scope of McGee's power and influence in the criminal world, they had difficulty linking him to his crimes because neighborhood residents, fellow gang members, and even rivals wouldn't talk to police because they were fearful of retaliation. On February 11, 2003, a surveillance team in Bullhead City observed a man resembling the 29-year-old fugitive leaving the apartment in question, but conclusive identification was not possible in the dark. The suspect was followed by investigators to a double-wide mobile home on nearby Brill Street, but no arrest was made. Early February 12th, after roughly 20 hours of surveillance, as authorities were preparing a search warrant and planning to raid the home with a SWAT team, U.S. Marshals positively identified McGee departing the residence with a female driver. Officers pulled the vehicle over around 1 p.m. on Roadrunner Drive, and McGee was ordered out of the car and onto the ground in the presence of more than 25 officers of the LAPD. Bullhead City Police Department and Federal Law Enforcement. McGee surrendered without a struggle, refusing to speak. Even in jail, McGee was still causing chaos. 
While awaiting trial, McGee was held without bail in the Los Angeles County Men's Central Jail, the largest single jail facility in the world just minutes south of Atwater Village. Being the charismatic leader that he was, he commanded the respect of equally intimidating criminals housed in the cell block 3300A row, the highest security area of the facility. McGee was a shot caller and fellow inmates would not act without his permission. On January 7, 2005, at roughly 4.40 p.m., inmate Rudolfo Gonzalez, intoxicated from a homemade alcoholic concoction, was to be removed from cell block A. Sheriff Deputy Ruel Ibera handcuffed Gonzalez and extracted him from a cell under the ruse of meeting with his attorney. They passed McGee's cell, who stated that Gonzalez, an acquainted of his since elementary school, did not have his permission to leave. Obediently, Gonzalez attempted to return to his cell, fearing something was amiss as he did not have an attorney. Upon changing direction, Gonzalez was tackled by four deputies. Inciting McGee's rage, he commanded inmates to assault the deputies with apples, oranges, urine, and bleach. It took 20 minutes to successfully remove Gonzalez from the cell block. McGee then ordered inmates to break the sinks in their cells so jagged pieces of porcelain could be used as weapons. It was hours later, nearly 10 p.m. that evening, when two deputies began their shifts in investigating the damage in a row. As they entered, they were assaulted with books, fruit, porcelain, and various items. Inmates set multiple fires, and a riot squad was assembled to squash the rebellion. By 2 a.m. the following morning, all inmates had been removed from a row, most voluntarily surrendering, but McGee was dragged out by force. Addressing the fact that an officer he assaulted survived the attack, McGee was quoted as saying, next time I'll have to stab him. On January 9, 2009, Judge Perry sentenced McGee to death. McGee was additionally sentenced to multiple consecutive life sentences for the four attempted murders. Perry stated that McGee treated killing as some kind of perverse sport, as if he was hunting human game. He continued, McGee is a committed killer and an obvious danger to society. McGee showed no emotion. McGee now resides on death row in San Quentin State Prison, awaiting his execution as prisoner number G47302. Let me know what you guys think of this situation in the comment section, and please be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.